For most, it's merely a dream. Athletes dedicate their entire lives to training for that one chance to represent Team USA. What does it take to be the few who make it to the top? I'm Steele Johnson, U.S. Summer Olympian and Silver Medalist. Join me behind the scenes in a series that follows four U.S. athletes and what they have overcome in pursuit of the 2022 Winter Games. So what is it about speed skating that you love the most? Is it the feeling of gliding on the ice? Is it the competitive nature? What really brings you back to the ice? Yeah, I think I'm naturally a very competitive person. When it comes to speed skating and especially short track, I really like the idea that there's like a clear cut winner and also you never know what you're gonna get in a race. There's so much like tactics behind it, so much passing and movement. The fastest person doesn't always win. Like it comes down to strategy and race experience and just how that particular race goes. Short track is definitely more strategic than um, long track just because like you can be the fastest person on the line. All that matters is who crosses the line first and who gets the gold or the silver or bronze. You are an Olympian. You went to the 2018 Olympics. What was that experience like? Let's just say that I was uh, like a deer in headlights. I was just like, oh my gosh, like what, what is going on? This is insane. Like this, this huge stage and everyone's like at their best and like also like watching and like the whole world. I, I <laughs> yeah, my brain can't like comprehend that I even like still went, which is insane. What were some of the challenges or adversities you had to overcome to get to that Olympic Games. I had like a lot of friends going to like homecoming and stuff like that and like just missing out on that and like missing my friends and stuff like that definitely was a challenge and I was just like, am I making the right decision? After Olympic trials and me making the team, I like was basically pushed into the spotlight and I didn't know how to deal with it and it was just, a, it was very challenging because also my dad didn't know how to deal with it and um, like love him to death, uh, but I just think he was like super excited and like just like, oh yes, like you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. And I was just like, I wanna stay at home and like be with you and that's it. You took six years off, which is not a short amount of time, came back and within two years made your first Olympic team. What was that moment like when you crossed that line at Olympic trials and realized you were going to the Olympics? Poof, emotional. <laughs> Um, so leading into the Olympic season, I was skating the best I'd ever skated in my life. Um, then going into Olympic season, I was not. I underperformed to what I believe I was capable of. I got beat in the event that I hold most dear to me is the 3000 meters. The first day, um, I was one of the favorites and I straight up got beat. She had a great day, a great race. and. Um, and there was only one spot, so winner goes. But much like any sport, you can cry about it, but then you've got another day to go. So actually that night, my husband came up to me and he, um, he came up to me and said, we're gonna tear up this ticket because tomorrow's another day. So we raced uh, the thousand meter the next day, which, isn't an event that I focus on by any means, but it's absolutely the most fun race. And I actually was able to get third, which was a qualifying spot, but there was a time issue. So you actually needed a time standard to race that event at the Olympics. And I had missed it by like two tenths or a tenth or something. So another devastating day. Have injuries been a big challenge blocking you in this journey to get to the Olympics? I think anyone's journey and especially my own is never like a clear path to the Olympics. I was at a World Cup right before Olympic trials. Someone fell inside of me and cut my hand. I was in China at the time and had to fly home the next day to go get surgery. At that time, I had experienced already losing Olympic trials. Like they told me I wouldn't be able to skate or anything like that. So then when I was told that I actually could skate, I really had like nothing to lose. I had this full like hand cast on. I had somebody having to dress me before each race, tie my skates for me, which I think any athlete, like we're very particular in the way that we do things. So even that was just a big obstacle to get around. Even something as simple as skating. I usually hold my 
right hand with my left hand, but I didn't even switch that, which is just like this little thing that is a big difference. When we go around the corners, we put our hands down. I couldn't do that anymore. So that was definitely a big setback for me, but going into Olympic trials, it was like this weird thing because while I wasn't physically in the best shape, I literally had nothing to lose going into it. So I think mentally I was in a better state of mind than I would have otherwise been. And that's something that I've kind of held with me through this last four years was that I knew like I didn't want to put so much pressure on myself because I knew I could perform better if I didn't do that. The next day was the 5K, the 5,000 meter. I decided that I would sit that one out and put all my eggs in the 1500 basket, which was the following day. I was the last pair, so I knew exactly the time that I needed to race. And I saw that time and going to the line, I actually got a little emotional because I was like, if I just skate how I know I'm capable of skating, like I will do this, I will make the team. And uh, yeah, I, I went out and felt amazing, crossed the line and the board was right there as you crossed the line. And so I looked up and just saw like the, the num like two numbers that I knew I needed to see. It's, I can't talk about it too much, right? Like it's four years ago, but it's still, uh, it's quite emotional. I was at a point where I was like, I'm sick of winning bronze. I don't want it anymore. I no longer was like racing to medal. I was racing to win. I've accepted that it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to even like bad weeks. Every day I try to take a race mentality to, to practice so that when I get to a race, I can honestly tell my mind it's just another day.